this. Um, today I'm going to cover um, Jason Jack. You know, I think Jason Jack is one of these Trinitarian believers too. Um, he's talking about old world buildings and the millennial kingdom. Um, it's some of the teachings that these guys have. You know, look, you know, um, Jason Jack's been here a while. Um, he's been on YouTube for a while, so um, I haven't covered him as much, um, but I want to sort of see where he was at. I kind of noticed that he uh, he does uh, hang out on the lives of uh, so-called Luke and uh, so-called brother Luke and Rene Roland. So he seems to be in that sort of camp of um, believing the Trinity. And it's, it's highly problematic because people who believe the Trinity, one, they have a false God. You got to understand that the Trinity is a false God. It's, it's a pagan belief. The whole point of the Trinity is to deify the flesh of Mary and then claim that the flesh of Mary is white, which is why you see the, all the paintings and murals and buildings and cathedrals in Europe and throughout the Western world all sort of paint this, this white man, two white men, three white men, two white men and a bird, plus Mary, the so-called mother of God. And then the heavenly visions of all white. And then when you see the so-called devil, the devil's got dark skin. This is all stupid because the children of the flesh are not the children of God. They the flesh cannot please God and flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. So this is why, you know, you got to understand the Trinity needs to be understood under the lens of a person who loves the world and wants to colonize the world. This is why when uh, the papal bulls were done and manifest destiny was done, uh, they did it under the guise of religion. Um, and they always said, look, we need to conquer and drive out the heathen, the savages and the beast. And they claimed that they were doing it uh, because they were uh, following the word of God, that God had chosen them and they were manifest. It was their destiny to rule and reign in this world. Right. And see, back then when they were doing it, they were claiming, oh, they're bringing in the ushering in the kingdom men, right, by driving out the the unfruitful works of darkness, which they considered to be the native so-called savage people who they didn't really consider to be people, but actually beasts, right? Savage beasts, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, Jason Jack, you guys got to understand that the scriptures um, is spiritually discerned and a lot of people don't spiritually discern it. When it talks about driving out the unfruitful works of darkness, Jason Jack should understand that uh, when the scriptures say you're born of corrupt seed, that when you and your wife get together and you have a child, well, you're corrupt. You're sowing into your wife a corrupt seed and your child who's your offspring is corrupt, too. And that's why it says they in the flesh can't please God. And why Jesus told Nicodemus he had to be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. God's not mixing his spirit, which is the incorruptible seed with, quote, flesh and blood is not is not mixing the two. It's not hypothetically unifying the two. God is saying, I'm called the father of spirits, the children of the flesh are the children of God. Because God is a spirit named Jesus, God comes fashioned in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's why he quickens the mortal body of all of us who believe the gospel. We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But our mortal body has been quickened because God is going to come fashioned as a man. But we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. We, he that are joined to the Lord is one spirit. And we who are in God joined to his spirit. We come fashioned in the likeness of what? A bond servant. Those who are still in bondage to sin and death, though we are free from sin and death. Okay. That's why it says the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit and the spirit of God dwelleth in me. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Okay. I hope you guys understand that. So we got to understand uh, who God is. God is a spirit named Jesus. The man Jesus made of a woman, listen, made of a woman, made under the law, made to be sin, cursed anyone that hangeth on a tree. The man Jesus who died for the sins of the whole world, who uh, was, beard was plucked, he was smote, spat up on, he stumbled on the way to the cross, tired, hungry, sleepy, thirsty, um, was nailed to a cross. Um, he was he was whipped. He was pierced by a Roman spear, and out came water and blood. And that water and blood spilled into the earth, right? And then he died. All right. Well, he died. 
they 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 pierced him to make to ensure he was dead, but he died, right? And then um, he died on the cross. He was buried, and God, who's a spirit named Jesus, quickened that mortal body, as it tells you in Romans eight eleven. And by the way, um, Jason, I think Jason Jack is a doctor, right? So he died. Jason Jack should know that mortal does not equal immortal. Mortal means it's capable of death, right? And all the children of the flesh are mortal. The children of God himself and, and his children, because God's immortal, God cannot die. Neither can his children die. Okay? We come fashioned in the likeness of of children of the flesh who can die. And because people hate our message, many people, quote, who are prophets are, quote, unquote, put to death. But they're not putting to death the children of God who are the spirit of truth because you can't kill the truth. And we be, we've been begotten by the spirit of truth, right? We've been begotten by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creature. And he says, we don't perish. We, we're not the fruit that perish, right? We're the good fruit on the tree of life begotten by the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Okay. So this is what Jason Jack needs to understand. These are, these are fundamental basic concepts. So a lot of people are going to hate the truth and to try to destroy the truth, they will kill the earthen vessel. But you understand that the treasure within the earthen vessel, which is the spirit, which we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, last Adam, a quickening spirit, that, that precious jewel or precious stone doesn't quote unquote die. You can't destroy it. So this is why God has given you like, you know, the, the analogy of a, of a jewel, you know, how you have a jewel, a beautiful polished jewel. And you like that jewel is beautiful. It's polished. It's perfect you know and it uh it's been tried by fire and that's why god says look saving some with fear pull them from the fire hating even the garment spotted by the flesh when you have a jewel you typically you pull it you pull that from the ground you pull it from the earth right and then you what you take all the dirt and all that stuff off you 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 you, you basically wash it right and then you polish it, you, 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 you polish it and then you cut it and then you set it and you set that stone, right? In a good foundation, right? And then, you know, the, so cause it needs to have a good foundation. And then, uh, you know, jewel, jewelry is not something you seek to hide. It's something that you, that you want to be seen, right? And jewelry typically reflects, reflects light, right? That's, you know, Jewelry is something to be seen in the light. It's not something you put on in the darkness. It makes no sense. So that's why it says, um, let our light shine before men that they may glorify our father, which is in heaven. And that's when it says to glorify is just to believe the truth, right? Because it says no flesh will glory before him. So you have to believe. And then you are what? Born again. Now you are made a what? A precious stone, which is a what? Jewel, Right precious stone. All right. And that's because, you know, the faith of the saints, that's, that's precious. God looks at the heart. God looks for those to believe. And when you believe again, that's glorifying God. You're not glorifying yourself. You're denying yourself. And that's why, um, Jesus told Nicodemus that he had to be born again. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna let that go. Um, oh yeah, we're, we're at nine minutes in. Okay. So, um, Jason Jack is going to cover, you can see this video. He's going to cover old world buildings and the millennial kingdom. Uh, let's see what he says here. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me, let me go and see what he says here. He says, in this video, we look at several cathedrals in Italy with a fresh set of eyes to better understand when these magnificent buildings were constructed and by whom. During the discussion, we will also briefly discuss uh, Tartarian architecture, the places of Versailles, and previously destroyed old world buildings. Old world buildings. Um, okay. 
You know, it's so funny. When I think about this, I think about um, colonization, essentially. And, you know, Christopher Columbus, again, I, I keep telling these guys that the Trinity and all these fakers who pretend that they're the people of God and they want to make God a so-called white man. And they would go throughout all the world just killing and murdering and, and raping and doing all this stuff under the guise of saying, hey, we have to bring the sword and we gotta, we're going to destroy the destroy these savages, destroy these beasts, right? And this is pervasive, guy. This, this, this history and this, this corruption of the word of God for filthy lucre's sake is pervasive. And if people don't understand, that's how, this is how a lot of Europe and the Western world got its money. And a lot of these buildings and stuff, you know. And people just refuse to believe this because people want to say, no, we're just a great civilization and we did all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, um, before the so-called slave trade in places like Africa, they were enslaving each other, right? But they could easily escape and they could run away and they could do all this kind of stuff. So it was hard to track them down. Then someone came up with a brilliant idea. Hey, let's just say if we are so-called white, if we can have somebody that has some obvious sign, we can say that they these people have been marked. That's when they came up with what? They looked, they first came up with the idea that, hey, if we enslave these dark-skinned people because they were doing trade with Africa, right? In early Europe, right? They were doing trade with Africa. Africa had all these great kingdoms, the Benin Empire, Songhai Empire, you know, um, Great Mozambique, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And Egypt, by the way. They were already doing trade with Africa, Ethiopia, and all this stuff. You know, Ethiopia was way bigger, right? Ethiopia was part of Africa. And uh, they were already doing trade with a lot of these African countries. So they knew about that. Matsa Mutsa was one of the richest people back then, right? Um, they were already doing trade with Africans. So they knew about Africa. They knew about the, 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 the advancements and the technology of African empires, that they were on par with those in Europe. Many people from Europe went to school in Africa, right? Uh, Timbuktu, all these different places. You know, th this, is, this is known. This is actually known history that they just don't tell you about, right? And it was at the time that they decided to backstab the Africans because they were thinking, well, you know, our men, our men are greedy and men want more wealth and more money. And what they decided to do, they said, you know what? We've been enslaving other so-called Europeans, but guess what? These people keep escaping. They keep blending in, et cetera, et cetera. And then they wanted a way that they can enslave people, but then the, it could be easily seen that that person is a slave. So they said, we want some outward, some outward sign that we can utilize to signify this person is a slave and they can't easily escape and blend in to quote unquote, the populace, right? And so then they came up with the idea to let's enslave Africans because they're so-called darker skin. And so they looked at that and said, that's brilliant, right? These people, we can say that they're marked. It is after they came up with this idea from a secular standpoint, then they went to the so-called fake religious teachers and the religious teachers went and they came up with the thing that they call the, the, the curse of Ham. Right, the curse of Ham. That's when they came up with that. So they came up with this thing called the curse of Ham because they went to the religious leaders. The religious leaders said, "Okay, we'll 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 work with you here." Right? Remember, um, those fake people who claim to be something they're not. They were always trying to uh, uh, endear and ingratiate themselves to the governments, right? And they were trying to ingratiate themselves to the government. Remember, if he keeps going on like this, talking about Jesus. All men will believe on him and they will come and take away our place in our nation. OK, remember that. And so they were always willing to make merchandise out of other men. And the scriptures warn you that these people do this stuff because they're greedy and for filthy lucre's sake. Right. And when I tell you guys this, I'm telling you, this is all men. The fact that their skin is so-called white, that's, you know, what you consider to be white because race is a social construct made by men and. Again, they invented race for this very purpose. They they invented race. Before that, it, race was like, it was, race was a non-existent thing. It wasn't really, a, they didn't try to 
scientifically justify race, you know, and Jason Jack, a so-called learned man, should know this, right? He should know this. So they tried to codify and make race something that was scientific, you know, through eugenics, Darwinism, you know, all this kind of stuff, racial hygiene. Listen, racial hygiene. And then under the guise of racial hygiene, that's where they were able to um, galvanize and um, motivate people to say, look, we, we, our group of people, we are an advanced, civilized people and we should be the lords over all these other people we should lord over other folks we thank god we're not like them and so the the liars right uh went and contacted other liars who claimed to represent god and said can you can you help us out and again they came up with the curse of ham i'm 16 minutes in they came up with the curse of ham and essentially, the curse of Ham basically taught that essentially that, you know, of Noah's three sons, you know, is just talking about the offspring of the so-called the blacks. Essentially, they were meant to be what? A servant of servants. A servant of servants, meaning these people considered themselves to be the true servants of God. And then they're supposed to rule and reign over those who are people who are meant to serve them. But the people who were meant to serve them, they were, quote, unquote, beast of burden. That's why you hear about the white man's burden, the beast of burden, the white man's burden, because he has to go into all these different nations and countries and he's got to drive out these beasts. He's got to vanquish. He's got to destroy. He's got to tame. Right. And that's how you had this whole colonization manifest destiny all throughout, you know, you know, Africa. Southeast, South Asia, you know, all these different places, Amer the Americas, etc. You know, that's how you have that islands and all this kind of stuff. And um, so they were doing this, right? They were, quote, unquote, enlightened, right? There's the enlightened movement and they considered themselves to be enlightened. And um, this that came later. Previously, it was just done under the guise of religion. And OK, so they had the curse of ham and you can you can look and you can read and many of the so-called uh, Judaic sources where they were endorsing this. They were endorsing in the Judaic sources. They were endorsing it in the, in the Islam writings. They were endorsing it in so-called Christian writings. All these so-called three fake Abrahamic faiths were endorsing this curse of ham lie. All of them, all of not some, all of them. We're endorsing this. And that's why you can see in the in the slave trade, uh, Islam participated in the slave trade, right? Uh, even though supposedly a lot of some of Africa was, it was, became, you know, where, where, where um, Islam, celebrated where, where Islamic, uh, Islam participated in the slave trade, so-called Christians participated in the slave trade, and those who claim to be Jews, they participated in the slave trade, right? Some of them, right? So each so-called so-called religious group participated. Uh, now, though it's pretty known that so-called Christians, so-called Christians participated in it, right? And Islam participated in it. Though the group that they're trying to really protect because they do a rotation, now in this quote-unquote era of lies, they're trying to say that they're trying to protect the idea that those who claim to be Jews participated in the slave trade, that Judaism was a, a large part of the slave trade. But they did, right? Christopher Columbus fashioned himself, just to show you, manifest destiny going into the new world. They thought of America as the land of milk and honey, and they thought of America as being, quote unquote, new haven, the new heaven and a new earth, right? the new world. Christopher Columbus was going to the new world. He was supposed to be a converso, but a converso was a person who supposedly was a so-called Jew who then converted via compulsion to quote unquote Christianity. And when they say Christianity, they just mean Catholicism, right? So under the Pope, the Pope was issuing the papal bulls and the papal bulls was telling these people, look, go into these. And this, this was basically venture capitalism. This, 
piracy, venture capitalism, go into these the so-called new worlds, find new places and get the resources of these lands. And then we can drive out the people, kill them, murder them because we're advanced. And then we can take the land, decrease the beast, right? They must decrease and we must increase. And then we can quote unquote cultivate the land and we can be fruitful and multiply. We can what increase. And then we bring in the so-called other Europeans. Now, Again, Christopher Columbus and many of his crew considered themselves to be a what? Chosen. Right? They don't want to teach you that in history, but that's come out. And then in Jamaica, early Jamaica, uh, the Tayano people, I believe it is, or early, early in Jamaica, those people who claimed to be something they're not were in Jamaica and they were participating in the slave trade. They were considered to be the quote unquote majority so called whites because. Through this new system of white supremacy, they said, you know, that we're going to have these, quote, stratifications of white people, that not all white people are the same, right? You may have heard how the Irish weren't considered to be uh, white at the time. They were called the white N-word, right? The Ita Some of the Italians weren't considered to be that. Spain, parts of Spain. Like, you, you knew that not all, they had this early form, this early fashion of so-called, the, through the new invention of racism you know white was white was amorphous it, it was you know where, where you know it was wasn't this thing where it was just white people became white who weren't white i mean you know and so again in jamaica in jamaica many of these so-called people claim to be jews who were white uh, participated in the slave trade. And in fact, they didn't just participate. They initiated. They were initiating, right, in, in, the, in the Jamaica, in Jamaica. And so they, they have this whole history of them participating in Jamaica. You can read uh, the roles of the people because they kept records. In fact, they not only had slaves, they passed slaves down in their will, and they were 11 times less likely to manumit or free their slaves. And even if, even though they had all these concubines who were, again, slaves, you know, Jamaicans, they had these slaves and they were bringing in people and putting other people and making them slaves. Right. And then they had these slaves they were having sex with these slaves. They were having children by these slaves, but then they still didn't consider them to be truly part of the so-called family. In fact, they even had separate cemeteries for their so-called offspring. Right. Because, of course, they weren't true. They weren't equal to the so-called white Jewish man. And this is a history that you can that that's out there. But for some odd, strange, really strange reason, America, Zionist America and Zionist Britain doesn't want to tell you guys about this history. For some odd reason, they don't want to tell you the truth about Christopher Columbus and the people who who came with Christopher Columbus and the slave trade. And how in the early Americas back in that time, Jamaica was, was considered to be bigger than the so-called New World. Because remember, the New World started out fairly small. You know, Manifest Destiny is when they quote, we must go quote unquote west, drive them out to the sea. Does this sound familiar? Drive them off into the sea? Does that, does that sound familiar? This term, expand our borders? Right. The greater the greater plan. Well, the greater new world plan. Well, this is what these guys did. Right. Again, Jason Jack should know this stuff. Jason Jack, you know, he's a learned man. Right. He's if he's getting into books and all this kind of stuff about new buildings and all this kind of stuff, he should know these things. And so this thing with Christopher Columbus, who considered himself to be a so-called chosen. And just like all the manifest destiny, these people consider themselves to be chosen, a chosen race. They enslaved, they, 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 they killed, they murdered, they robbed, they raped, they did all this stuff, right? How's YouTube going to be sensitive to this stuff? If they can run these commercials of propaganda talking about some Jews are a race, I can make a video saying they're, they're not a race. They're some people who claim to be something they're not. They're fake. They're phony. They're Gentiles. Gentiles. Gentiles, guys, are, guess what? Children of the flesh are Gentiles because children of the flesh are not the children of God. 
And since the children of the flesh are not the children of God, and those who don't believe are children of the flesh, not the children of God, then that would make anyone who doesn't believe a heathen. A heathen is a Gentile. A Gentile is someone who is dead. A, a Gentile is a serpent. You're, he that committed sin is of the devil, all is sin. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. Therefore, the children of the flesh are heathen. Therefore, the children of the flesh are Gentiles. We who are born again, we come in the likeness, in the fashion of what? Children of the flesh. But the children of the flesh are not the children of God. God's called the father of spirits. Again, Jason Jack should know this. This is this is this is in the scriptures. But since he's going beyond, he's going extra, he's going, he's going beyond the scriptures and he can get into all this stuff. I mean, my goodness, he has a lot of time on his hands, which I would think he wouldn't have so much time. But since he's got the time to take you guys into old world building and architecture and all this kind of stuff, then I figured, well, maybe he'd have a little bit of time to look into some of this history that, you know, America tries to hide and Europe tries to hide. And it's well, this history is known, guys. It's, it's, it's really odd because this history is known. But for some reason, certain history just doesn't, they just, certain stuff, they just don't want to get out. And, you know, um, yeah. So, I showed you guys a video of these so-called two people claim to be something or not. And it's, a, I think it's a, something Valley Midrash. And these are two guys who claim to be Jews. And they're talking about, slavery in Jamaica and they said you know we own slaves as much as just as much as anyone else but we were less likely 11 times less likely the man you met yeah we put our offspring of the slaves of all our concubines and our affairs and illicit affairs we put we, we put those children in separate graves when they died and they didn't get the full rights that we got but we're the most oppressed despised and persecuted people on the face of the earth. People who literally own slaves. And then on top of that, during the discussion, and guys, you can watch the discussion. There's the video. I got the video down. They say in the video, when they're talking about their slave ownership, they said they're le 11 times less likely the man you met. And then said, well, we weren't specifically, we weren't really abolitionists. I mean, we weren't for the freeing of slaves because, again, they were 11 times less likely to free. They would pass their slaves down through the wheels, which is how all of this came about. This was a person who claims to be a Jew who heard all these things. What he did is he heard so-called Louis Farrakhan talk about the so-called Jews and the slave trade. And he said, this can't be true. This is blasphemy against God's chosen race. And he said, I'm going to go look into this. He goes and looks into it. And guess what he finds? Uh-oh. He found out it was true. Right there in the thick of slavery. Right there in the thick of it. Right there, not just a little part of it, but... A big part of it. But then they what he does, he tries to minimize it and say, well, we were we own slaves just as much as anyone, but we were less likely, 11 times less likely to free them, and we were discriminatory. And then he says, here's the the cream the, the cream on the top. And I mean the cream on the top was he said. He said, Look, they own one of the biggest slave plantations, Joseph Savannah or something like that, in the Americas. And he said, Well, we quote unquote, supposedly God's chosen race. Well, he, he admits, he says, we were the so-called predominant so-called whites in Jamaica. I mean, he identifies himself as being white, right? But now they're trying to convince you that, well, if I, if I just take the word white off and then I put the label Jew on it, then it's not white supremacy, right? Right? If you say Christopher Columbus was if you just take if you just hide what Christopher Columbus said he was, then you can't say that Christopher Columbus going into the so-called New World to colonize. You can't claim it's white supremacy, right? Christopher Columbus wasn't a white supremacist. That's anti-Semitic to say that about Christopher Columbus, right? Do you understand how it works? So this this man says, he says. Well, many of the rabbis, they said, according to the scriptures, you know, it was OK that we own slaves because after all, the Bible itself endorses slavery. Now, Jason Jack should know this, right? 
Renee Rowland should know this. Brother Luke should know this. Jack Smack should know this. That the Bible talks about you can't serve two masters. How do you reconcile that, guys? It says, he that committed sin is, of a, ser is a servant of sin. He that committed sin is of the devil, meaning you serve the devil. You can't serve both God and the devil. You can't serve the God and the devil. You can't drink of the Lord's cup and the cup of devils. You can't sit at the Lord's table and the table of devils. This is what the scripture is saying. Light had no fellowship with what? Darkness. In the mind of the chosen races, they're like, light had no fellowship with those who are dark skinned. Hence, the curse of Ham. Do you understand? So it says he to commit sin is a servant of sin. And it's talking about people who try to do what? Claim that they're keeping the law. But it says if you offend the law, you offend all points of the law. Right. And it means you're a servant, meaning you're a slave because you can't escape sin and death under the law. That if you're a child of the flesh, you're in bondage. Right. Remember. How will ye escape? Oh, you generation of vipers. Remember this generation of vipers? Ye of your father, the devil. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. You're in bondage. How will ye escape? Again, Jason Jack should know these things. Renee Rowland should know these things. Brother Luke should know these things. So it's saying he whom the son is set free is free in what free indeed the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of what sin and death. Death wears thy sting grave wears thy victory. He that are joined to the Lord is one spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. We escape the pollution of the world. Our kingdom is not of this world. Death does not reign over us or anyone who's in our kingdom, which is not of this world. We don't sit in darkness. We're not bound in chains looking for bread and water. We're kings and priests. We're free. And we've come to set at liberty the captives via the gospel. So going back to the Jamaica slave trade man. So this 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 so-called rabbi or whatever this teacher, this guy claimed to be chosen race, who who went and found out for himself, and he just did a little digging. I just want you guys to take note. Take note. This guy goes in, looks at the records were which were already there. And mind you, many of the so-called records were destroyed, but there were enough records and he found out, ooh, 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 we were quite, we were quite involved in the slave trade there. Yeah. Now he doesn't say anything about, well, oh yeah, he doesn't make the connection between, oh, that's right. We were in Jamaica, supposed so-called Jews were in Jamaica owning slaves. He doesn't make the connection with Christopher Columbus being there at the same time. Right, he came Early on, supposedly they had to leave, quote unquote, Spain, Portugal, all these so-called place, right? Italy, you know, and they said, oh, dude, because of the pilgrims, the pilgrims, we were being persecuted. And we had to leave. All right. So you left and then you end up having slaves. And the people who you're running from just happened to be there, too. Some of them people were Johnny on the spot and they just happened to come into America, too. And have so, so you're so oppressed that you literally you're so different and so unique that you can own slaves. Does that sound like so? Do you can you guys imagine somebody saying, you know, the people are so racist and, you know, they're so racist against us that, you know, you know, they're so racist that, you know, um, 
I live next door to a racist and I got a plantation next to the so-called white people. What do you think the white people think of you as being if you can own slaves right alongside them? Clearly, they think that you're white. You own slaves and you're a big part of the slave trade. How are you the most oppressed? I thought you were running for your life. How are you able to participate in the commerce of slavery? I thought you were fighting for your life. I thought you were being persecuted. So you see these people, they make these, uh, they make a show of persecution. Because that is the excuse to say, oh, you have to go into another nation to seek so-called refuge. But then within that refuge, these people come and what do they do to the people? What's the T word? Oh, that's right. They talk about 9-11. They say, oh, who did that? They use a T word, right? And now YouTube's trying to censor, censor people for talking about, well, maybe something's not right with that. Maybe something, maybe it's, maybe it's, Maybe it's got a little bit of, seems like a little bit of an inside job. So these people are coming to another place and these people who are not, who are minding their business and then they try to vilify the, check this, check this strategy. Other people are already in their own land. These people claim to be persecuted. They come into a quote unquote land, claim that God has given them a decree to have that land. They consider the other people to be savage and beasts. They highlight all the so-called sins and transgressions of the, of the so-called natives so that they can feel good and think that they are godly and that they're justified in killing, murdering, robbing, raping, and enslaving all the so-called natives and driving them out and murdering them and diminishing them. And then they just continue doing this throughout all the world. And then they say, well, you know, uh, we really got to watch out for those so-called terrorists because those people are horrible. Jason Jack, Renee Rowland, all of the so-called people in America are sitting here um, in America, and I'm pretty sure there's blood in the soil. There's blood in the soil. Because people love the treasures of this world, right, Christopher Columbus? And that's why those who claim to be something they're not murder Jesus. If he keeps going on like this, he'll take away both our place and our nation, right? Again, getting back to the cream on the top of the little dessert, the sweet lies that these colonizers tell. The so-called People who claim to be Jews and are not, who went to Jamaica and enslaved these people and had these concubines and all this kind of stuff and getting it on with these women and said they were the predominant white group at the time. And they said, well, the people of color, which tells you they don't consider themselves to be people of color. Clearly. The people who did this, you know what they say? You know what, you know what they said? They said, um, well, we weren't necessarily particularly in support of abolitionism at the time. We didn't support the abolitionists. And here's the kicker. Listen to the reasoning why they didn't support the abolitionists. Listen to the reason why these people who didn't consider themselves people of color and said they were the predominant white people at the time. They said we didn't support the abolitionists because the abolitionists were what? Anti-Semitic. Now, anti-Semitism, as I showed you in another video, it just meant they were against our religion. That's why they said, well, we were, those were people of color and we were the predominant white group at the time. Because it wasn't even considered to be, Judaism wasn't considered to be tied to a color at all. It was only, it was only after um, hold on just a second. My goodness, what did I do with that? Hold on just a second, guys. I'm sorry.
It was only after a guy named Wilhelm Marr, the patriarch of anti-Semitism, a book written by Moshe Zimmerman, tells you how this guy turned something that was considered to be a faith only, right? Then this just becomes a question of is it a true faith or not? And Jesus said, you make the word of God in none effect via the traditions of your fathers. You're of your father, the devil. So it's like, okay, so your, your, your religion is a fake. That's why I talked about their religion in the scriptures. It says you got a fake religion. God, Jesus is telling you they got a fake religion. So, and their religion is just the traditions of men. It's like they're taking the word of God and they've corrupted it and they made it to the traditions of men. That's why they have all these so-called books and they're talking about our sages will tell you about the, all the possible interpretations. That's just try to author confusion. Well, it could mean, but it could mean. So when they say something and then one person gets it wrong, they say, well, rabbi, such and such said this. And then this, and it's a way of escaping possibilities. Well, our sages said, and then they're like, well, it said it should happen. Well, wasn't the sage right? Well, maybe the other sage was right. And maybe this is just all stuff to like, you're a false prophet, you're a liar. And so you don't get called out as a false prophet because, you know, supposedly the false prophets are supposed to be what's, what's supposed to happen to the false prophets. So this is all a way to protect themselves. Well, let's just say our sages third hand. Well, I was just, I was just listening to our sages. And remember, they're talking about some such and such is dead. Abraham is dead. Saul is such and such is dead. And Jesus was like, God's got a living and not the dead fool. My sheep never perish. You're talking about children of the flesh. So again, this guy, Wilhelm Marr, he's the one who took something that was supposed to be a faith leading up to so-called World War II. Remember, they did come up with the Curse of Ham before World War II, right? The Curse of Ham preceded eugenics. Curse of Ham was them using, trying to use God to justify enslaving people, right? And then eugenics came about. Eugenics came about, you know, after America was colonized, right? At that time, right? Somewhat after that time. And then they sort of Darwinist belief and evolutionary belief, survival of the fittest race, the races, right? Right? And then it became uh, this thing where they talk about the, the ascendance of man and evolution of man, essentially. And, um, this this Wilhelm Marr, who said, well, let's make it not just that Jews are a faith. Let's say that Jews are a race. Guys, I saw this on Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial is telling you how they made Jews a race. It's like they know this. This is at the it's, it's an organization so big that they contradict themselves, but yet this is known history how Wilmar, Wilhelm Marr was the man who they, they, they at least credit with making Jews a race. And this book is written by a guy named Moshe Zimmerman. And then he does this makes Jews a race, World War II pops off. Mind you, World War II was after Christopher Columbus, who claimed to be a Jew, a chosen, and the so-called slave holders who claimed that, who, who, who identified themselves as so-called Jews in Jamaica and in the early Americas at the, at the so-called dawn of Manifest Destiny. So they were right there and they said they were less likely to manumit and then they said 11 times less likely and they said the reason why they did not support the abolitionists in large part was because guess what? Guess, guess the excuse that they're using? And mind you, this is before Jews were considered to be a race. Now clearly people thought that, that God's chosen people were white. There's no question about that. That's the whole point of Christopher Columbus. And when you read his letters, Christopher Columbus was quite the racist. But they hadn't scientifically codified it yet. They used the curse of Ham, right? 
And so the reason that they said that they didn't support abolition, and mind you, these are the people, supposedly these are the, the people, the so-called people of God. The reason they didn't support abolitionism, the abolitionists, was because they said um, the people who supported it were what? Anti-Semitic. I mean, this is the type of stuff that makes you, I mean, you have to laugh to stop from crying at the utter stupidity and blasphemy of these hypocritical fools. How much time I got in? 45 minutes, man. I haven't even covered J Jason Jack yet. It is insane. It is utter. In, it's utterly insane. When the scriptures tell you so clearly God is a spirit, God could have wrote, I am flesh. No, says manifest in the flesh. Jason Jack, I mean, this is a person who claims that he believes that he, Jason, do you have eternal life? I'm just, this is a question for you, Jason. Do you have eternal life? Do you have it now? Did you believe the promise and did you pass from death to life? Are you a new creature created in Christ? And you're in the body of Christ. You're not the head. You're in, you're a member in the body. God is the head, the savior of the body. There's one head. There's one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. And it's a spiritual body. You sow into the spirit. You shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Are you a member of the body, a son of God in the quote unquote bride of Christ? Are you a member in the bride of Christ? Are you a member of the body? Are you in the glorified body? Are you in God? Do you glory in God? Do you have Christ in, do you abide in him and he abide in you? Do you have Christ in you, the hope of glory? Because you're the body, you're not the head. And if you're in, quote unquote, the glorified body, it means you're born of the incorruptible seed that liveth, listen, and abideth forever. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. What the Lord has joined together, let no man put asunder. Newsflash, when you believe the gospel, you have denied yourself, your wife, your children, your career, the things in this world, all the treasures of this world, love not the world, nor the things any world in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father, oh, do you have Christ in you, the hope of glory? The love of the father is not in you and you're still in the flesh and they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you, Jason, are making videos claiming to come in whose name? In the name of Jesus. The same name that Renee comes in, supposedly so-called Brother Luke, Jax Matt comes in, Greg Jackson comes in. You guys all claim to come in the name of Jesus, but all I can see is this earthen vessels. Do you have that treasure in earthen vessels? Because if you're saying that you're coming in the name of Jesus, you're saying that God is with you, Emmanuel, and you're saying it's Christ in you, the hope of what? Glory. And so people should seek the hope which is in you. Seek and ye shall find. So they're seeking a proof of Christ, the truth. It's the spirit that bears witness, the spirit of truth speaking in you. They're not looking to confer with what? Flesh and blood. They want to confer with God. God is my witness. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. Receive ye the spirit. Receive ye the witness. Receive ye I give unto them eternal life by the hearing of faith or the works of the law. But yet, Jason Jack, you come in the likeness of a mortal, in the likeness of the son of man. So you're saying when you come, you're saying, I come in the name of the Lord and it's Christ in me. Christ is come in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. Christ is manifest in the flesh, justified in the what? You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not Christ in you, the hope of glory, he is none of his. 
So many people miss the time of their visitation because they deny that Jesus Christ can come in the likeness of any son of man, which is why when Jason Jack, uh, Greg Jackson, uh, Renee Rowland, so-called Brother Luke, myself, or anyone who claims to believe on the name of Jesus come to you, the only thing you're looking for is you're looking to seek, you're seeking for a proof of Christ speaking in them. And you're saying, oh, this is Christ is come. Christ is come. Christ is come. As many as receive him, receive ye the spirit. Receive ye the way, receive ye the truth, receive ye the life. It's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life. The flesh profit of nothing. But he can come in the likeness of any quote unquote earthen vessel. And there's many fashions and forms of man. That's why after the resurrection, he appeared to them in another form. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in her, Christ in him, Christ in them, Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But our mortal body's been quickened, Romans 8, 11, just as the mortal body of the man Jesus Christ was quickened, whom God, a spirit named Jesus, raised from the dead. See, when Christopher Columbus came to the so-called new world, they said, hey, the light is come. They said, we have a sword, literally. And they said, the sword is to drive out and destroy the beast, destroy the enemy. But instead of destroying the enemy, which is death, they did exactly what their father taught them to do. Their father taught them to lie and the father taught them to murder. And their father taught them that, hey, you can do all this using the law unlawfully. And so they did all these things. And then after they did these things, after they had, as hypocrites, claimed to do what? Use the word of God unlawfully, using the law to condemn other men, because they thank God they're not like other men, because of course they're chosen. And then they use the law on other men and then they have this huge plank in their own eye. And then they went and had concubines and did all this stuff and had illegitimate kids, slept with the so-called native, made all these so-called what they consider to be impure. I want you to think about the cons this consideration that these people thought that these so-called natives were beasts. But yet they quote unquote had children with these so-called natives, these so-called beasts. And what, according to the law, are you supposed to do if a man lie with beasts? What is it? That is an abomination. So what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to be stoned. But did they stone themselves? Of course not. Of course not. You should know this, Jason Jack. And as a doctor, you should know that each produces after its kind. That if these supposedly these natives were savages and they were beasts, then how are they able to even have offspring with them? Corruption cannot inherit in corruption. You sow into corruption, you can only reap corruption. You don't say, well, let me put a good seed with a bad seed. Jason, you never take what you call purified water and then you take some other water that you know that's polluted sewer water. Do you ever say, let me mix the sewer water with the pure water because I and then, then I'm going to drink it. You say, I want the pure water. I want the living water. This water is contaminated. This water is going to make me sick. This water is going to give me all kinds of problems and all kinds of issues. I'm going to die if I have that water. That water is bitter. If you say that water is pure, you're a liar and the truth's not in you. Jesus says, I'm the living water. Jason, we just want to know, do you have the living water? That's all I want to know. I just want to know if you're a precious stone in a temple not made with hands, a temple built by God, a perfect temple. Hold on, son. Hold on. I think this video is going to go a little bit different. <laughs> 
I'm going to go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and play some of what you played. And then I'm going to play a little part. And I want to end it. This is the video, Old Buildings in the Millennial and the Millennial Kingdom. Guys, just so you know, just so you know, all of us who are born again, we have eternal life and eternal life reigns in our kingdom in heaven. And we have eternal life. So we reign over those who don't have eternal life because we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and we've overcome the world, sin and death. So we reign. We've entered his rest one day with the Lord is a thousand years. Come unto me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. And say, he that believe has entered his rest. He that believeth hath rested from his works even as God did from his. So now that we've entered his rest, we reign. Right? Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? So we reign. All of those who are in our kingdom, who have eternal life, we've gotten a victory and overcome the world. Eternal life reigns, guys. In this world, what lords over these children of darkness, children of the flesh, born of corruptible seed, what reigns over them is death. And they serve their master. They can't escape because they cannot do what? They can never fulfill the law. So the only thing that they can do under the law is one thing, and that is what? Die. Die. We are explaining to them that, look, by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You're never going to be work, work enough to satisfy the quote unquote law to he that worketh not, but believe it. So we're saying if you're going to try to work the law, then you know what? That's going to bring you forth what? That's going to bring forth death. And we're saying the law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of what? Sin and death. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Death, where is thy sting, grave, where is thy victory. He whom the Son set free is free, and what? Indeed, how will ye escape? So we're explaining to these people that, look, you enter his rest, then eternal life reigns. And you're not, what, subject to death. No, understand? Their kingdom, which is a kingdom of darkness, if our gospel be hid, it is hidden from those whom the God of this world had blinded the mind of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. The gospel, which is the image, should shine unto them, right? Of God should shine unto them. And so it's basically what we're saying is like, look, you need to believe. I know this may sound silly to you. But it's through the so-called foolishness of what? Preaching, believe on him to everlasting life. That sounds foolish to the wise of this world. That sounds foolish to the rich of this world. That sounds foolish to the learned of this world. And so many of these guys Instead of just saying, I deny that there's a God outright, they make a false God because they want to seen, be seen, not as quote unquote, to give glory to God. What they're trying to do is they're trying to rob God and say, the reason why I accomplish and get the wealth and the success that I have in this world is because God is with me and God wants me to go out and own more things. And I'm going to lord over you in a godly fashion. But if you don't do what I say, then that's why I got to bring out the sword. I'm going to cry aloud and spare not. But when the scriptures say cry aloud and spare not, it's talking about our weapons are carnal. And it's talking about preach the word, which is the sword, which is the word of God to destroy the enemy, which is death. Because we're actually trying to come to them and offer them peace. Right? They don't understand that, yeah, we're trying to destroy them, but not in the way that the colonizers destroyed them. Our warfare is against, we're speaking against their father and they themselves. We're speaking against the lies that they've been taught. And we're saying we need to destroy the lies because you got to be begotten by the word of truth. The words that I speak to, they're a spirit in their life. The words that I speak to there are spirit in our life. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. You got to receive our witness. Receive ye the spirit. Receive ye the truth by the works of the law or the hearing of faith.
Because the truth is, by the works of the law, shall no flesh be justified. And they that in the flesh can't please God. You got to be in the truth, found in the truth, having not your own righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. See, when I say God is a spirit, these people, they don't like the fact that God is a spirit. They think, well, no, you're denying that God, that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. I said, no, I understand that God manifest in the flesh because God, who's the king, 1 Timothy 1, 16 through 17, says to Jesus Christ, in Christ in me, the hope of glory, to the king, eternal, immortal. Listen, listen, Jason, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. And it says, listen. The only wise God talking about Jesus, eternal, immortal, invisible. It's talking about the only potentate dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Well, many people saw the man, Jesus, made of a woman, made of the law, who's mortal and died. One, one hour. Let me play this. Chapter 20, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. This Question, Jason. Who are the children who are in bondage? Who are the children who are of their father, the devil? Who are those who can't escape? Who are those who, who, who the only reason why they're still captive is because they oppose themselves. Who is the ones who they're trying to hide their quote, their unbelief? It's people like yourself, Jason. It's, it's people like look in the mirror. It's people who say, I believe, but they're hiding the fact that they don't believe. It's people who are yapping their mouth, talking a lot, but then saying God is essentially a white man. But they don't want to use the word white. So they say, well, God's a Jew. And then, of course, you see the Super Bowl commercial and they say, let's end racism. So now you have a so-called Jewish race. And the Jewish race is, of course, the chosen race, a race above all races. And if you bless the chosen race, God will bless you. And according to your so-called prophecy, one day they will rule and reign, right? They leave off that if. If you do this and obey my voice, then you'll be a people above all people. And it's already told to them by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It sees neither them that are circumcised keep the law, but they want to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Make merchandise out of you. Hence my whole story. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. God try at the what? Hearts. A Jew is not one outwardly, needs that circumcision outward in the flesh. But a Jew is one who's one inwardly. And circumcision is that by the heart, God try at the hearts. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. They in the flesh can't please God. God's called the father of spirits. So the key is preach the word in season, not a season, and faith from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. The key is faith believing the truth, the promise of God. God who cannot lie promised us eternal life before the world began. And so the thousand years is talking about enter my rest. One day with the Lord is a thousand years. Signify. Revelation starts out saying, these things which are signified. It's called the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. To reveal his son in me, I preached him amongst the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with what? I conferred not with flesh and blood. It is the spirit. I saw an angel come down from heaven that beareth witness to spirit of truth. Are they not all ministering spirits? He that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. I saw an angel. What do you mean I saw an angel? And cast them into the bottomless pit. The pit is talking about the heart. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God searches the what? Heart. 
People say I've hidden these things in my heart in the dark places. No man can see my heart. No man can see. Jason, people are trying to search. I'm trying. Will, will he find faith? Who can search the heart? That bottomless pit that's never satisfied. Always seeking out the lust and the treasures of this world. He that loveth silver will not be satisfied with silver. And sealed him. You got to believe. You are trapped in lies. You have to hear the truth before you can believe the truth. And then you can be born again, set at liberty. It's talking about man is here, but for a little season. It's talking about man is born of what? Corrupt seed. And it says a corrupt tree cannot produce good fruit. Neither can a good tree produce. Neither can a good tree produce corrupt fruit. And it says you got to be born again of the incorruptible seed. The word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Meaning you never perish. Death where is thy sting. Grave where is thy victory. We are free. No longer in bondage. No longer a servant of sin. You got your Renee rolling Thomas. Even after you're saved, you still sin. It said he that is born of God cannot sin. He that abideth in him sinneth not. He that sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Depart from me, I never know you. How can we sin if we're sealed and sanctified, found in God? We're found in him, the way, the truth, the life. I saw thrones. Just a second. I saw thrones. And they that sat on them, it says, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the son of man shall sit on his throne, he shall also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The gospels preached to them that are dead, God's God of living, not the dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh. They in the flesh can't please God. All flesh will perish and men shall turn again to the dust. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Judge according to men in flesh, but live according to God in the last item of quickening spirit. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelling you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Them who were beheaded for the witness. That is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. We see, we tell you things which we have seen and heard, and you receive not our witness. As many as received him, I give unto them eternal life. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of the gospels preach to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Ye receive not our witness. He's the head, the savior of the body, and there are many members. The spirit and the bride say, come. It's not talking about literally beheading us. It's talking about being saved by God, the head, the savior of the body. We have the mind of, we, plural, have the mind, he's the head, the savior of the body, many members. Witness of Jesus and for the begot he us by the word of truth. You must be born again by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. He that is born of God cannot sin because this seed remaineth. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You live and abide in me, found in me, having not your own righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness forever. I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. None shall pluck them from my. You've been begotten by the incorruptible seed. You're on a good tree. You're a good fruit. You're you're you got a good shepherd. God is good. And which had not worshipped the beast. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither does he worship with men's hands. Ye know not what ye worship. You worship the Trinity. You worship year of your father, the devil. And the works of your father you will do. He is a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When they pierced the side of Jesus, out came what? Water and blood. That is he that came by water 
not by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. God comes manifest in the flesh, but he's justified in the spirit. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. We don't count the flesh of Mary as God. That is to worship the creature, not the creator. So men worship the beast. They worship men. You're of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you will do. You worship the dead man on the cross. You don't understand because God quickened the dead man on the cross. You don't worship the dead man. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. They in the flesh can't please God. Neither is he worship with men's hands. Not hard to figure out. Neither his image. You see the Pope roaming around when they were doing the crusades. They had the cross and they had the thorns. And they had the emaciated Jesus on the cross and they said, look, this is, we're going to vanquish. We're going to avenge. Neither received his mark upon their foreheads. We have the mind of Christ and in their hands. He doesn't, he's not worshiped with men's hands, right? He's talking about the temple made without hands, a city whose maker and builder was God. So you seek ye the, the all Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness found in him, having not my own righteousness, the spirit is life because of righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Well, why does it say we lived and reigned? Because it says we've entered his rest. So it's giving you a signified all those who rested from their works as God did from his because these works were finished from the foundation of the world. God already spoke it. He already spoke it. And it's not like, well, one day there's going to be a just man born of flesh and blood. Just one day there's going to be a person who's going to keep the law. No, he's saying, no, everyone who's under the law, they're going to perish and they're going to die under the law. But it makes no sense because he's going to say, well, the legal sin that was actually paid. All you have to do is actually believe the truth. You, to he that worketh not, but believeth on he, him that justified the ungodly. Who's the him? God justified in the spirit. That's why it says without controversy, grace and mystery, godness, God was manifest in the flesh. Is, is God in you, Jason Jack? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation? Salvation is of the Jews. A Jew is not one outwardly in the flesh, but a Jew is one inwardly. Circumcision is that by the heart and in the spirit. We are the circumcision, worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ, and have no confidence in the flesh. They in the flesh can't please God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. Liveth and abideth forever. Live according to God in the last out of a quickening spirit, right? And they lived and reigned a thousand years. But the rest, because we who've been born again, we've been regenerated. Ye which have followed me in the regeneration. What do you mean followed you in the regeneration? Um, deny yourself. He that tries to save his life will lose it. He that loses his life for my name's sake. You must be born again, Nicodemus. You are of your father, the devil. The works of the devil must be destroyed. You must be born again. You must be a new creature created in Christ, not of the flesh, nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of God, who's called the father of spirits. You got to be born from heaven, from Jerusalem above, as free as mother of us all. You need to be a spiritual child of God. You need to be joined to the Lord, the spirit of truth. He that are joining to the Lord is one spirit. It's God that worketh in me. The works that I do, ye do also, because it's God that worketh in you to do unto will of his good pleasure. I give unto them eternal life. It's God that worketh in me to do unto will of his good pleasure. God is the one who gives eternal life. You don't get eternal life from the flesh of Marcus. You don't get eternal life from the flesh of Jack. You don't get the eternal life from the flesh of Renee. These are all perishable earthen vessels that will go back to the dust. God comes and manifests in the likeness of these earthen vessels. But we have this precious treasure. Christ sent us the hope of glory. We have this precious stone. We have this precious rock, the spiritual rock, the foundation stone, the chief cornerstone. Christ sent me the hope of glory. How radiant and beautiful is the light. Let our light shine before men that they may glorify. No flesh will glory before him. Our father, which is in heaven. You say the rest of the dead live not again. Why? Because we died to self. Then our mortal body, which is no longer us, was quickened. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit of him that raised up 
Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. So the dead body, which is no more us, that is quickened because God comes fashioned in the likeness of those who are still in bondage. That's why they're like, well, wait a minute. Who are those in bondage? What is it? What's the allegory in Galatians 4? The children of the bondwoman were born after the flesh. The children of the free woman were born after the promise, after the spirit. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the good shepherd, walk not after the flesh, but after the good shepherd, the spirit, who walk not after the flesh. That's he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. It is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth, who walk not after a lie, an idol who walk not after the Pope holding the crucifixion with the dead body on it, who walk not after thorns and thistles, which are to be burned and cast into the fire, but after the spirit, I will try them as silver is tried. I will bring a third part through the fire, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the, they that are in the flesh can't please God. Blessed and holy because we followed in a we followed in a regeneration washing renewing of the Holy Ghost not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to His mercy He saved us He saved us That's why it says some that are first shall be last and some that are last shall be first because just because Jason you were born before me in this world doesn't mean you're going to be born again before me into that world right. A person who is older than you can be born again after a person who was born later than that person who was born in this world. So if I was born again before you, you must follow after because you need to be born again after me. You must follow in the regeneration, wash and renewing of the Holy Ghost, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And when you're born again, then you can judge righteous judgment. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit upon his throne, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes. I know them that say they're Jews that are not. They're not all Israel, which are of Israel. That is, it's not as though the word of God had taken none effect. They just haven't believed the promise. Neither because they're the seed of Abraham are they all children. Because Abraham was born again of the incorruptible seed. The first birth of Abraham was corrupt, Nicodemus. You got to understand this. But in Isaac shall that seed be called. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is, the children of the flesh, they in the flesh can't please God. All flesh will perish and men shall turn again to the dust. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And the promise which he's given us is eternal life. Blessed and holy is he that take part in the first resurrection. That's why we are a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Be God, he us. See, we were born again before they were born again. That's why we're the first fruits. It's always that. Throughout so-called time, people are born first of flesh and blood of corrupt seed. Then some of those people believe the gospel and they're born again. And they have been begotten by the word of truth that they may be a kind of, listen, first fruits of his creatures, right? New creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. I saw an angel come down from heaven. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. There are three that bear record in heaven, the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one what bears witness in heaven? It's the spirit that bears witness to spirit's truth. These three are one. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. You don't count the flesh and blood of Mary, a creature. Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such
chapter 20. Give me just one second, guys. I'm almost done, okay? Okay. On such, neither can they die anymore. Neither can they die. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore. Listen, listen, listen. We're found in the Lamb of God. Jesus answered, saying unto them, The children of this world, my kingdom is not of this world, marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted, you know, uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Listen. The gospel preached before unto Abraham. The gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be, neither can they die anymore, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live, I give unto them eternal life according to God in the spirit. They that are worthy to be counted, they that which shall be counted worthy to obtain that world. My kingdom is not of this world. I saw a better, saw a better country in heavenly Jerusalem above as free as mother of us all. Don't believe these lying colonizers. And the resurrection from the dead, reason, neither marry nor are given in marriage, Right? We're not children of the flesh just because the old mortal body has been quickened. That's no more us. This is what Paul read Romans seven closely. That is no more. I that old man, which you can see, that's no more. I I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. I'm a new creature. Don't confuse the quickened mortal body, the resurrected dead body with the child of God. God is God of living and not the dead. Right. I don't need the gospel priest to me again. After I pass from death to life, neither can they listen, but they which are accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the, from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore for they are equal because they're not children of the flesh, right? I give unto them eternal life, which liveth and abideth forever. They are equal. Remember, I saw an angel. He that adjoined to the Lord is one spirit. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth, right? These three are one. One what? One witness, you receive not our witness. Receive ye the spirit, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith. I give unto them eternal life. The spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay? Neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who shall be heirs of salvation and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection? And when the thousand years are expired, when they miss the time of their visitation, when we say, you know what, the, the gospel is preached unto you as well as unto us, the gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us, but it didn't profit them because they sought the profit in this world. They love the treasures of this world. They sat there and claimed they believe the truth. They lied, tried to make God like unto corruptible man. They went and painted in Saudi Europe. They went to the Duomo. They looked and was they was caught up with the with the with the, with the Louvre. They thought the Musée d'Orsay was gorgeous. They saw all the so-called paintings and murals of them making this making themselves deity, claiming that the flesh of Mary is God. This is what they did. This is what they've done. This is what they're doing. And so the offer, Jason, Jason, we offered them the kingdom. They said, return to sender. They were offered the kingdom. They were offered eternal life. The gospel was preached to them. God's not saying, well, you know, you can just pass up. You know, when so-called this person comes to you and you see them and you're looking at the outward appearance and you're looking all caught up in the, the outward appearance and looking at the flesh and being a respectable person and saying, hmm, nah, I don't think the word of God can come fashion in the likeness of you. God is saying you admit that was Christ in that person, the hope of glory. They're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But all you saw was the resurrected dead body and you missed the time of your visitation. And you're like, when is he going to come? When did you steadily people are dying every day? 
caught up with the cares of this world every day. And they're like, when is Jesus going to come back? And you have hypocrites like yourself, like Jason Jack, Renee Rowland, Jack Smack, and all these lying sign and wonders claiming that they're doing the will, doing Super Bowl commercials, talking about some, we must end uh, discrimination against God's so-called chosen race, which is a blatant lie. People are being hypocrites pertaining to this matter and they're blaspheming. So how is it that people are going to miss the time of their visitation? It's because of people like yourself, Jason. It's people like Renee Rowland. It's because all these people who made this false God and they're telling people to put their confidence in men and not in God, who's the one who gives eternal life. It talks about the fruit of the spirit. And it says, be God, he us by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. But it says the fruit of the spirit. It doesn't say the fruit of the flesh. It doesn't say hypostatically unify the flesh with the spirit. Oh, Nicodemus, you got to be born of flesh, blood, and spirit. It says, no, born not of flesh, nor blood, nor the will of man, but of God. Begotten by this. The wind bloweth where it listed, now hear the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh, or whether it goeth, so are all those who are born by the spirit. And it says now, that you guys have believed the lie. You believe the traditions of your father. You conferred with what? Water and blood. You didn't confer with the spirit that bears witness the spirit of truth. Since you didn't want to believe the truth, but you'd rather believe a lie. Now it says, now the Trinity, the Trinitarians, those who claim that they're the chosen race, they're going to go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the world, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but it's just as a battle between what? The truth and the liars. And when you don't believe you're of your father, the devil, and the works of your father, you will do. He is a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God, the truth dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, God is our witness. He is none of his found in him. Having not my own righteousness, my life is hid in God. You can't look at the flesh. OK. And says, well, these people are going to go out to the four quarters of the earth. This is everybody in the first Adam. Spread about and they're going to be gathered into the grave, into the dust. Flesh and blood cannot even inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born into the kingdom to have the, the right to enter the kingdom. You have to be born of the kingdom birthright, right? It's not the fake birthright tours that they're doing in the so-called Middle East. And she'll go out and deceive the nations. It's the spirit that I, immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. It's the spirit that beareth witness the spirit of truth. Do you count the flesh and blood of Mary? No. To the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. Right? The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Oh, the world is filled with lies. You know, the dragon opened his mouth and out of it proceeded the flood. The world is flooded with lies and propaganda and commercials and ads. And then when the truth comes to people, they oppose themselves in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging, acknowledging of the truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You receive not our witness. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, right? After they came from their, their father's loins, they went from the breadth of the earth and encompassed the, the, the camp of the saints about. They're all around us. The children of the flesh who are not the children of God are all around us. They're all around us, right? But they can't, they're trying to spy us out. They're trying to spy us out because they can't tell. You know, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hear the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh, or whether it goeth, so are all those who are born of the Spirit. We're all ministering spirits, but we come fashioned in the likeness of an Egyptian, in the likeness of those who are still in bondage, in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. Yet we're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And it says, in the beloved city, the kingdom of God is within us. The door is in us, right? And fire came down. 
out of heaven and devour them, saving some with fear, pulled them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, in their hearts. Oh, their hearts burn with the lust for the treasures of this world. Right. And brimstone. Right. And brimstone. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart stone where the beast and the false prophet are. No lie is of the truth and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Oh, the lies. They, they're, they're, they were liars from the beginning and they're going to be liars forever. They're never going to be found in him having not their own righteousness. They're going to be found liars. They're going to be found in the flesh. And then they won't be in the flesh because their house or their temple will go back to the dust and they won't be found at all. I saw a great throne and him that sat on it from whom the face of the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. There was found no place for them. You can't sit at the Lord's table in the, in the table of devils. They never ate the bread of life. Never, they never drank the living water. They couldn't inherit the kingdom of God. There was found no place for them. Right? He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. The gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. God had already concluded all men under un, as, as sinners in unbelief. That they may be saved by grace through faith. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, the tree of life. Make the tree good and its fruit good, and make the tree bad and its fruit bad. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books. The gospel was preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. According to their works, to he that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. This is the work of God that you believe on the one that he sent. To he that worketh not, but believeth on him to justify the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. We are his workmanship created in, in Christ Jesus. And now that we're born again, got the free gift. Now it's God that worketh in us to do and to will of his good pleasure. We go out and preach the gospel to you. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. He the spiritual judgeth all things, but he himself that judges no man. We preach the gospel. The gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. And the sea, all men are drowning in perdition, drowning in lies. Out of the mouth of the dragon proceeded the flood. You're of your father, the devil. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell, the heart, delivered up the dead which were in them, right? That was the desire of your mother and father to have a child, right? He lusted after the earthy woman, right? Your father's earthy. Out of him came your earthy mom. And then he planted his seed, which is corrupt seed, into your mom. And he that soweth into his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, right? And they were judged, every man according to their what? To he that worketh not, but believeth on him to justify the ungodly. Then they just create this fake God, say, well, we're going to claim the works of God are the works of the flesh, the works of Mary, the works of death. And then they're like, well, I don't understand. What did I do wrong? I said, I'm a grace believer. I'm not trying to fool or trick anybody. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You're already dead once. The gospel is preached to them that are dead. Now you're going to miss the time of your visitation because... We are coming to you and telling you about the grace and the mercy of God. And we're saying it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And you should seek a proof of the truth speaking in us. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Be God, he us by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Begotten by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Live according to God in the spirit. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the what? Lake of fire. That's it. I'm going to let it in at that, guys. That's Revelation 20. Okay?